we'll go ahead and get the uh, December 13th, 2006 Zoning Commission meeting started. Let the record show all commissioners are present. At this time, we'll go ahead and open up the public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak on any agenda item that is not up for public hearing, please come up and sign in with the secretary, and you'll get your three minutes to speak. Okay, no one wishing to speak. Item four, acceptance of the minutes of the November 8th, 2006 Zoning Commission meeting. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Paige Becknell to approve, second by Scott Courtright. Is there any opposition or discussion? I, I just want to make sure they yeah. spell my name properly. <laughs> Did staff get that comment? Spell Julio's name properly. All right. Motion passes. Uh, I was handed a revised agenda, but it's just a couple of typos. It's, it's not changing up any order of business. Item um, item 6A, instead of A. Robert, should read Al Robert. And item 7A, uh, the zoning re review is for Woodgate condominiums instead of 3B construction. Item four, public hearing to consider rezoning cases. Item 5A, zoning review ID 1628.06, lot 1-D of the James E. Gore property for Ray Shakespeare. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I own the property uh, on 14343, Highway 431. And I want to uh, see about changing the zoning uh, from medium intense to mixed use corridor. Uh, I built this building in 1994 um, for commercial use. And uh, since 1994, I added on to it twice. Um, and I wasn't faced with this issue until 1997, um, I mean 2006. Uh, that I want to sell it and I couldn't sell it because it wasn't zoned commercial <coughs> and I'm asking to rezone this building that I built in 1994 for the zoning which I have the permits that I bought and built in 1994 comments questions from commissioners yeah I got a question to ask him uh, how many people do you have in uh, working in there or is it just self-contained by yourself I own a building and I had Santa Decorating Center in that building and now I have at least to a cabinet shop, which is probably six people working in there. I've got a question for you. I would like to know if staff did make you aware that what you have is a non-conforming use and that your request is actually a spot zoning issue. Sit, sit when you went in to see the staff to fill out this paperwork, right. were you made aware of the fact that your existing business is a non-conforming use? Right. And that what your, your request is actually spot zoning? Right. So you were made aware of that? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. You're Any other comments or questions from commissioners? And at this time, we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak on this item, please come up, sign in with the secretary, and you'll get your three minutes to speak. Okay. No one wishing to speak. Comments, questions from commissioners? You said that uh, <clears throat> the issue first came up because you attempted to sell the property? Yes, sir. Uh, and the, and I, a dry cleaner went to buy it at that time, and then I sent them to the parish to see if it was they, if they can locate there and they couldn't because it wasn't zoned for that use. How long has the cabinet shop been there? Um, well, probably three years. Staff, the the the, the building is in a commercial use, <coughs> correct? Yes, sir. It's not conforming. Yes, sir. Yes. So it's not conforming. Right. Can it change uses? Depends if it's uh, 
something similar in nature, he can he can change it. Yes, sir. And that's the problem that I have. That I can only run it or sell it to certain that ain't but a handful of people. And if I knew this when I built this building in 1994, that I couldn't sell it as a commercial building, I wouldn't have built it there. Well, in 1994, there was no zoning. Right. And I was bought, all the permits that I bought for it was for commercial use. And I added on to it three times and and bought uh, commercial permits every time. But if we change the zoning, somebody can tear down that building and put in townhouses. Whatever's allowed in mixed use right. can Condos. go there, and we can't say anything about it one way or another. Um. We have a we have a note here that um, you petitioned the zoning commission in September of two thousand one. Yes, ma'am. And then the council denied it. Right. Well, we denied it and the council. Right. Correct. <coughs> okay. I'd like to make a motion to deny based on spot zoning uh, all the surrounding area is residential I have a motion to deny by S Steve Barrow seconded by Sherry Sliman is there any objection or discussion motion passes Thank you. item 5b zoning review ID 1629.06 of lot 2-a-1 Lot 3 and Lot 4-A-1 of the L. W. Broussard property for Morris Daniel McMurray Sr. I'm Morris Daniel McMurray and I own the property. I want. I have a mini storage now on Lot 4-A-1, and uh, there's a vet clinic. That, that is next to the property and I have my residence on the property but on lot three I wanted to uh, rezone it to commercial it's residential now comments or questions from commissioners if there are no comments or questions we'll open up the public hearing Anyone wishing to come up and speak on this property, please come up and sign in with the secretary. No one wishing to speak. Comments, questions from commissioners? A aerial photograph shows four buildings, and uh, <clears throat> it looks like one of the four buildings is, is, in, is in the district, but the other two and a half since the district seems to cross one of the buildings, is that correct? correct? So that's all the mini storage? Yes, sir. I'll make a motion to recommend approval on the basis that it's uh, contiguous and um, and the use is consistent with the zoning district that he's uh, requesting. I have a motion to approve by Julio Dumas. I second that. A second by Scott Courtright. Is there any opposition or I'm discussion? Opposed. I oppose. I oppose. Ms. Jane, let's do a roll count vote because I didn't catch everybody as they. Donald Brand. I oppose. Scott. Approve. Yay. I was waiting for you to catch up. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Now I have three that approve. Four. Four. No, four. Four. No. Skip some 
Your, your, your Ipo. Scott, Allen, Julio, and Stephen uh, agree. Approve. <clears throat> and a swing vote goes to. Chairman votes no. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5C, Zoning Review ID 1630.06, Lots 2, 3, and 4 of the Forest Lawn Subdivision for Lakes of Ascension, LLC, and Vignes Lake, LLC. Good afternoon. I, I'm just shocked to see Bill Wood here at a Zoning Commission meeting. <laughs> well, I got a, a few passes, handouts, but I'm a couple short. Y'all could share. I don't share well, but I'll try to. I get this group too. <laughs> no, we just need one. Yeah, we just need one. Here you go, Bill. I'm just joking. Y'all wanted y'all to My name's Bill Wood, and I see y'all have a fancy new machine here, and I'd like to use it if if it if it's okay. I don't really know how to. You're okay. using it right now. It's magic. Okay. I'm sorry I had to come before y'all again tonight. Uh, last year on November 9th, I came before this commission, and y'all approved my rezoning request from res medium intensity residential to mixed use commercial and I was sleeping one night and the council had a meeting and I wasn't aware that they I thought they used you experts as their guidance and I'm not a big politician so I wasn't really involved in the politics so I'm back here a year and one month later to rezone this property. This is not what I would consider spot zoning. What I have is an email for y'all to review from Lance along with this map which shows lot number one on this map here is 98.21% commercial. Lot number two is 21.42% commercial. I, if I combine those two lots, we would have a picture that looks like this, which it would be roughly 59.85% commercial, I'll say 60% which those two lots could be combined in order to achieve half of this that I'm requesting. So I'm going to put this other one back up here. This is not what I would consider spot zoning. This is near the corner of uh, 621 and 73. Directly across the street from this property is a piece of vacant land that you can see in this area here that is currently zoned mixed-use commercial. To the left is a shell station. To the right is a either a daycare center or a preschool, some type of school or daycare facility. I understand from watching the council meeting a few months later when I found out that that was not really approved based on y'all's recommendation and overruled by the council that it was a subdivision restriction issue. I have today the subdivision restrictions that I can pass out to y'all if y'all are interested in looking at them. These restrictions were recorded on March 29, 1957. And I'll give you the basics of them. No house or structure or dwelling shall be permitted on any lot that costs less than $9,500 or 
or a minimum of 864 square feet plus a garage apartment is allowed for servants these restrictions are almost 50 years old I do not really want to I amended these restrictions and have the right to amend them again because I'm the majority owner of the forest lawn lots today there's a big demand last year at this time I was planning a very nice office building which I had passed out pictures of this and that's what I intended to build there in my opinion the highest and best use of this land is not a 864 square foot home with a garage apartment if you have a servant uh, last year when I came to get this approved it was right it was in November and all the homeowners in the subdivision were concerned because after the storm there was a great demand for housing so I bought a couple of trailers and put on my land 50% of America lives in trailers I'm not a big fan of trailers trailers would be probably the best return on investment for this land trailer I can buy for little to nothing I can rent the trailer but I'm really not interested in putting trailers there I want to put something nice that'll be an asset to the community and just for y'all's information all the people in the subdivision that fought this issue last time today the people who live in those trailers are the in-laws of the residents of the subdivision that fought it because they're homeless because they lived in the New Orleans area so I would request that these restrictions if mr. is uh, Valentine is here he can give us some input on what the council thought because I can read them I can give them to y'all y'all can read them and I think they're very out of date and inadequate for what I want to put there so I request y'all's approval to mix use any comments or questions from commissioners well actually O'Neill have you had a chance have you had a chance to review these subdivision restrictions that Bill Wood's talking about? No, I didn't, and I normally tell you all that subdivision restrictions are not the purview of this committee, and I understand. I don't know what happened at the council, but normally we don't consider subdivision restrictions. Well, I can tell you kind of what happened at the council meeting, because I happened to be there for that one. Uh, it came before the council. Residents got up and addressed the council and brought up the subdivision restrictions. And I was sitting in the audience, and I happened to be noticed the council did notice the fact that I was sitting there and a comment was made well if the Commission would have known about these subdivision restrictions uh, which we we were not they weren't presented to the Commission when we voted on this well we did touch on uh, be that as it may they were not the Commission never had a chance to actually review any subdivision restrictions but the question was put uh, if the Commission would have known about these restrictions would that have made a difference in the vote well any information can make a difference in the vote and yeah I shook my head yes because it's the truth it can make a difference in the vote and I'm not saying it's because of that that the council voted the way it did but that's what happened at the council meeting so now yeah George is here he can he, he may remember exactly what happened he can they may have a different memory of it I don't know um, but that's how it went down at the council meeting so comments questions from commissioners let me ask you a question but for the um, deed restrictions anything different from the last time has same anything changed same restrictions but but for those restrictions has anything else changed just 365 days has passed 
and I'm kind of under the gun due to the high demand today to do something. I don't want to just sit there the rest of my life, and I really don't want to put what the restrictions allow. I think traffic has changed. Paige and I looked at this property, and we couldn't hardly get in and out or turn around or do anything. If there's an office park or office building put on this property, how much traffic is that going to generate as opposed to three homes you know, put on the same property? Well, and Sherry has touched on a point. In a way, uh, this property coming back before us um, and having driven on 621 numerous times and getting backed up in traffic, Bill, what I'm going to tell you, I, I have no problem with, with what you develop. You do a fine job. Thank you. But based on, on the changes that I've seen take place in the last year, and even though I voted for this rezoning last go around, if I was voting, I couldn't support it because I don't feel like we would, I feel like we would be adding to a problem that, that's, that's only gotten worse during the past year, and we would be adding to it. Now, that's my personal opinion. Well, my opinion is is that <laughs> it's not the highest and best use to have a family live there, and it's definitely commercial property because of the traffic flow. That's where commercial people want to be, by a lot of traffic. That's just the way it is. I mean, because if you go for McDonald's or Burger King or any of the big boys, they study traffic counts before they go there. And like y'all heard earlier, you know, the rooftops bring the commercial. So I'm trying one last time. That's all I can do. Like I said, I'm under the gun due to the benefits that the federal government is giving developers to provide either A, housing, B, offices, or whatever we can put into commerce before January 1st of 2008. It's called the go zone. Staff, the, will this have to come back for resubdivision at a later date? It depends what he plans to do with it. I mean, if he's combining lots together, yes, but it, wouldn't, it would be a simple division of property. It would all has frontage on a public road. Do you well, I, I was going to say, I, you know, I share the same concerns about traffic, and I wish we could address them in the zoning process. But, um, you know, I can assure you that if, if you have to come back here for a subdivision, you know, that that have to be addressed. Um, well, I mean, I don't know what I can do about the traffic. Well, you can't. There's nothing. The way the property is, I mean, like you said, there's McDonald's and Burger King, but they do traffic studies and they put in turning lanes and make light alterations and there's right and i'm not too. really thinking of mcdonald's and burger king because they're right there i'm on sorry but didn't you just say that yes okay. but i'm saying commercial land people want traffic offices so right, on right but so you forth. don't there's no way to accommodate the traffic with just these three lots there's no way to put in a turning lane just for these there's there's not any traffic accommodations that can be made that's the problem with these lots the way they're sitting on this road would you have entrances for all three lots or would you have a common ent entrance to it depends possibly probably a common entrance on these four lots what i was thinking is one building on all four lots right so you could conceivably have a merge merge into lane where you could guide traffic off a little bit possibly there if you're going to use a, a spread out over three lots actually four, four because but one's already i didn't request to rezone it because one's already rezoned already zoned i mean i just think it looks goofy to do something on lots one and two any other comments or questions from commissioners yeah, I'd like to know what it's on lot five. It shows there's a single family home. Whom we've talked with. I haven't had a chance.
Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Then at this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to come up and speak, please sign in with the secretary and you will get your three minutes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chip Dejon, and uh, I'm also here again 13 months later. <laughs> um, Bill brings up the issue about trailers. Trailers aren't any issue for me, and I don't think with any of this what is what he's proposing to do uh, on, on these pieces of property. The trend in this area, uh, I live behind where he's proposing, you know, in the subdivision behind where he's proposing to do this, but that area and then other areas around the trend is residential. And it doesn't make as big of an impact with residential single family houses as a commercial building would be. Bill Woods talked about, you know, high flow areas and, you know, McDonald's and Burger King. So, you know, he's thinking about these things. And, and Bill Wood, he's a developer, landowner. I'm, I don't think that he's a builder. So, Bill Wood is looking to flip, you know, he's going to get this zone commercial, flip it to whoever wants to buy it. So I believe Bill would like to see, and I wouldn't mind seeing a, 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 a nice office that would blend in with the neighborhoods and everything around, but when it comes down to it, whoever buys the property is gonna put whatever they want there within the restrictions and guidelines of what the parish has. So that's what I believe would happen. Um, the lot across the street is zoned commercial, but there's a residential house on it. Um, so even though it's commercial, there is a residence there. The people on lot five, I believe, um, my wife also spoke with them and they are not for the, uh, for this being zoned commercial. They don't want a commercial building next to them. So Bill would talk to them, but we talked to them also, my wife did, and, and they're not in favor of having any commercial <coughs> building next to them. They'd like to see it residential also. Um, Michael, can I ask him a question? Sure. Where where do you live? Lake's you... Ascension Crossing. Oh, yeah. uh, in the neighborhood behind. So not on what this, lot are you? Seven, this, I believe. It's going to be on a different map. Not on this map. It's not on this map. Okay. Same parish though. But I live right there. And yeah, the traffic issue is a. Uh, sometimes getting out of my neighborhood in the morning takes me five minutes to get out on 621 because of the traffic. And coming back in, you know, it's just the lights there are horrible. The traffic's horrible. And, you know, it would just add to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. George. <laughs> Afternoon. Planning zone. Uh, George Valentine. Since Mr. Bill would mention my name, I guess I'll have to come defend myself. Since uh, I'm certain that the council didn't I wasn't concerned about the servants living over the two-story garage. It so easily states in the, in the Forest Lawn subdivision protective covenant here, first part of it says that the land use and building type, all of the lots contained in this subdivision are hereby designated residential lots, plain and simple. We were expla it was explained to us that it fell under the subdivision regulations. Mr. Mr. Marshall was correct. He was in the audience. We asked him. He said it could have had a barrier. Primarily, that's why it was turned down. I have the same issues as everybody else. We got a lot of traffic out there. I live in that area myself. I live on 73. I, I won't uh, mislead you any. Uh, Highway um, 621 is uh, in the pipeline uh, on the third phase of the, the improvements that's going on to be three laned uh, all the way down to the uh, DePlessis Elementary uh, entrance. Um, when that's going to take place, I would take a, a guess about 10 years mm -hmm. um, before we get to that phase, or that or before the state gets to that phase. It is a state project. It is a state road. It's going to be three-laned. What's that going to do to Mr. Billwood's um, lots through there? It's going to take some right-of-way, one thing. It's going to three-lane it, so it's going to make it a little smaller. So, you know, I would suggest that anything that's built on these lots, keep that in mind. 
uh, to make sure there's ample parking for the cars or whatever may uh, go through this uh, particular uh, development. Um, I, I, I really, I, and th there is a shell station on the corner. Uh, there's a school, a uh, barbershop, I guess it is, that have been there for many years. Uh, I really do not want to see businesses start down 621, but uh, if that's the uh, wishes of, of the Zoning Commission, then so be it. Um, but um, those are the reasons why the council at that time denied it. Thank you, sir. No one else, Ms. June? Uh, just to <clears throat> clarify, the me flipping the property, I sell lots, and that's what I do for a living. If I wanted to sell these lots, I could have sold them. I've owned them since 1999. Uh, I'm not interested in flipping the property, okay, just to reiterate that. I'm interested in improving and or using the property and taking advantage of what the federal government is offering us today to make it more quality than what the law allows me to put there now. Uh, further, Mr. Chip D. John lives on lot number nine, which I developed the subdivision that he lives in. And it is the furthest point away from this lot than any other lot in the entire subdivision. I would almost bet a lot of money on that that, <laughs> that I'm right. But I hadn't measured it. But if you go in the main entrance past Slalom Way down to the main entrance and you go down to the curve, he lives on the left in the cul-de-sac. I'm just, I'm giving him the location of the property. He lives the furthest away. And then also the man on number five, if he had that big of a concern, he'd be here tonight or he would have been here last year. I mean, it definitely has more impact on him than anyone else. And it seems hard, in my opinion, to understand how Mr. Valentine can object, object to commercial development. He's told me in the past his house is seven feet from Sonic, if that means anything. So progress has come, and it came by his house, and it's okay. But by my lot, it's not okay. I hope y'all approve it uh, thank you for your consideration I got a question for you you don't by any chance on lots 80 81 and 82 do you can you show me on the map oh on this one? right here across <coughs> these lots right here no those lots no longer is, exist as far as long lots the only forest lawn lots that exist today are lots. Those lots were, were developed into, I came before this commission, I think in 2002 or 2003. This man that I bought this land from recorded this subdivision map in 1957, but he never built any improvements. So he had lots in the middle of the woods that were platted and the map was recorded. And you couldn't get to them unless you walked through the woods to get to them. And he even sold a couple back in the woods, which I had to buy to, to make my deal. I asked for y'all's approval to improve this forest lawn subdivision and change the name which I did and turned it into Lakes at Ascension Crossing because the density was far greater with what was as is. I'm just trying to improve the area. Any 
other comments or questions from commissioners? Well, you've heard everything. What's the wish of the commission? I'll make a motion to deny based on the safety and traffic issues on Highway 621. I have a motion to deny by Sherry Sliman. I'm going to second it. I'd like to add that um, I, I think that uh, just the development pattern of the area, um, what you're proposing to do is, is just not sound planning. Uh, I think that that whole area needs to be looked at and that there's a boundary that, that may be reasonable, but I think to just single out lots one, two, three, and four like that is just not it's not congruous with the rest of it. Would you consider lots, I don't have five, but I have six through 12, then I hit the uh, spa, and then on the other side of the spa, I have 15, and then the man next door to 15 wants to rezone that. We can do the whole block. Millwood, I've got a motion and a second on the floor, because Julio did second it before he made his commentary. So uh, the I'm sorry. I, that's, that's all right. I have a motion to deny and a second. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. <coughs> Item 5D, zoning review ID 1631.06, tract one for Kelly and Lisa Boudreaux. I'm Kelly Boudreau and I'm the owner of the property. And uh, we just want to get it to uh, mixed use. So for uh, future development. Any comments or questions from commissioners? Staff, this, is, uh, this map is incorrect. That's correct, yes, sir. This is correct. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Well, uh, Lance, with the confusion on the map, could you speak to the surrounding area for us just so we can share, have a better feel for it? Yeah, what it is is that it's uh, where a quality lane is. Uh, it's just, uh, if you're looking at it, it's just south of that property. And uh, probably easier if I go to the projector. Yes. Okay. That'd be nice. Use that new technology. What exactly is your intent for this property if it should be rezoned? Um, rental. Or rental business rental. Like a building or um, many warehouses or shop, fab shop. This is the property right here. It's labeled right here, but it's just, it is right here. This is the property. And uh, it's coming up. This is going north. This is going north uh, this way, and uh, this is where 621 and 431 intersect at. But the property is right here. And, and tell us what the, the color, the blue on the left is, what zoning? That's a medium intensity residential, okay. RM, yes. Plants, could you use the aerial for a second? Sure, yes, sir. So which, where's the parcel on the aerial? This is it right here. The one with the lake? Yeah, the lake. Yeah, yeah. Pond. that pond back there. Yes, yeah, so this is it. And their property comes right here. And this is a, a aerial. They've now started developing this property as of now. This aerial was taken a few years ago. What's, what's being developed there? Uh, retail center. Basically what's uh, mirroring the other side. And what you're proposing is just to continue some of that retail, basically. Uh, he didn't say retail. He also said fab, yeah, I mean, which affects the neighborhood. What's that? Fabrication affects the neighborhood. Okay. Well, I mean, we don't. That's just a thought. We don't really have any idea what we're going to do but with it. But if we it. rezone it, we don't control what they do on it. Okay. Where's the table? Any other comments or questions from commissioners? 
And at this time, I'll go ahead, Lance. You just got a one, comment or yeah, I'm question? Sorry. Yeah, just one comment that I do. Uh, he made a request for mixed use. So I just wanted to make that the property that it's considered right now, the property that that's just north of it is Crossroad Commercial. Right. At this time, we'll go ahead and open up the public comment period or public hearing portion of this. Anyone wishing to come up and speak on this property, please come up and sign in with the secretary. She'll call your name. No one wishing to speak? Okay. Comments, so, questions from commissioners? So, Lance, you're saying there is no current mixed use anywhere near this? That's correct, okay. yes, sir. <coughs> what is it zone that right next door? I mean, the property that's being You're developed. adjacent to Crossroads Commercial. You're mixed use and you're adjacent to Crossroads Commercial, but you're requesting mixed use. So. Lance, can you do five, job, five shops in Crossroads? No, sir. No. No, sir. Can you, oh, go ahead. Can you amend this application? It was advertised as, as that. Mixed use. It's mixed use. Uh, I don't know. I guess it'd be O'Neill's. No. I guess, okay. No, it was advertised mixed use. No. Okay. Just. Mike, you want to say something? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and move that we deny this request based on the fact that we have Crossroads Commercial in place up to a certain point at this, and it just wouldn't be consistent to extend that or start zoning at mixed use. Second. I have a motion denied by Mike Bardwell, second by Steve Barrow. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Item six, public hearing to consider the following historical overlay. Review ID 1632.06 for Al Robert. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. And uh, just want you to consider what the request is. Comments or questions from the commission? If there are no comments or questions. We'd like to go ahead and open up the public comment or public hearing. Anyone wishing to come up and speak on this property, please come up, sign in with the secretary, and you'll get your three minutes to speak. Okay, no one wishing to speak. Comments or questions from the commission? The home's already on the property, correct? Yes. Speaking of the microphone, please, Mr. Robert. Yes, it is. This is the westernmost home. The one closest to the word the church. Yeah. Yes. that I was kind of surprised. I, I drove by this and I was kind of surprised it's all set up. When I saw the note from staff, it just says that um, the owner moved a home on the property, but I, I was kind of surprised it was all set up and ready to go. I, I guess that's just my comment. It surprised me that it was all done before anyone mentioned it. So I'm a little curious about that myself. How did all this happen? Because usually this is a... Uh, Actually, this really should be coming before the commission before any actual work is taking place. Right. Um, I just followed the, what I thought was right, which still today I thought was right. I went to the parish, got a permit to move the building, got a permit to move it, move the building, 
And then when I went back, they said I needed another permit to do the construction on the inside. So to get the construction on the inside, I got the fire marshal. The architect draw up the whole plan, got a fire marshal approved, and brought it back. And when I brought it back to get the approval, they told me I had to get come before the commission to get it approved for the historical overlay. So you were issued permits for the permit parish all along until you building. got to the end of right. this. Lance? He was issued a permit to move the building. And that's it? Yes, sir. So we moved on site, subject to a permit. Okay. I'm familiar with it, and I, I I can tell you that that whole little village is a it's a nice thing with with the cabin and everything else around it. I'm going to move for approval. I'll second that. I have a motion to approve by Julio Dumas, seconded by Mike Bardwell. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Item 6B, review ID 1633.06 for Roland Robert distributors. This is a new office building which we want to build adjacent to the distributor which is there now. There's an old building right on 44, and the new building would be right behind that old, that old cabin. Actually, the cabin would be removed. Is the old building staying where it is, or will it be dismantled and taken? It'll be dismantled. And what about what about all that other stuff with the tanks and all that stuff? Is that going to stay or all of that staying? Well, it's it's in a process. The state has come through and expropriated the property, so we're probably going to have to take those tanks down, and we're going to replace them with a lot smaller tanks. But they'll be taken down and moved back. Okay, if you have to take them down and then put them, back, would you do anything to? clean up the appearance of those I don't know if there's anything you can do but that's why we hadn't done anything with them okay. that's why they had been painted up because we know they got to be taken down with the next year okay. yeah there'll be a lot smaller tanks if you notice there's two tanks on this side towards the Gonzales side they'll probably be the size of the other tanks that'll be replaced and the big tanks so it'll be a lot smaller well this is a much much improved building than what you have today so yeah it'll settle be a lot more it's going to be nice know, consistent with the rest of the buildings right well it's improved but it to me it looks kind of like a modern building it doesn't look historic well i got the same problem uh if you read the ordinance it uh as far as architectural standards it states in there to be consistent with the style and period and i've got some problems when i looked at this uh, I don't see it being really consistent, even in an abstract way. I'm going to tell the commission right now, the further that we get away from this ordinance and the intent, the more trouble we're going to have down the road. This is an ordinance that y'all really need to look at and uh, necessary to do some background work in it as far as looking at, at uh, architectural styles. Well, when you're, I guess you had an architect that drew this up? Correct. Or did they tell you what style this is or do they, you know, did they give it a name or anything? Or? No, uh, that's what was drawn up. I mean, they had no consideration of the building having any effect on the the schoolhouse, which is actually an historical register, which is part of the historical overlay. The overlay, as far as we were all concerned, was to protect the plantation homes. I mean, the reason, only reason why there's a historical overlay on this site is because of the schoolhouse is on the National Register because of the history behind it, not so much of the architect, but because of the history of it being the first black school in the state of Louisiana. 
And this being, I don't even know if it's in 500 feet of the, you've measured it? Yes, sir, we have an overlay. Okay. The historical site overlay ordinance pertains to every site in Ascension Parish that is on the National Register. Understand. That's what, that is what determined the historical sites. But I think the main consideration is if it, like I said, talking about any of the plantation homes is the other sites. If you're going to build something next to a plantation, but this is in between the tanks he's talking about, which has it's, no aesthetics it, it, whatsoever. It doesn't matter. It pertains to every site on the National Register. There's only one exception to this ordinance right now, and that is Tescuco, or the former Tescuco Plantation, and that's it. You know, Al, if you were to put a, a gable over the sign, you know, oops, sorry, to look something similar to that, and give it a little bit more character. Mm -hmm. I think the largest and most offensive thing about the elevation is, is just a big box in the middle. I think you need to you need to get with your architect and just soften that a little bit. Or something more, you know, porches or columns or something a little bit more in historical. Yeah. yeah. But I mean it looks yeah. like the only thing that's really decorative is the front facade, so maybe that wouldn't be a big issue to change. I'm not an architect, I don't right. know. I'd like to go ahead and open up the public hearing portion of this. If anyone wishes to come up and speak on this property, please come up, sign in with the uh, secretary, and you'll get your three minutes to speak. No one wishing to speak. Are there any further comments or questions from commissioners? What's the wish of the commission? I'll make a motion to deny because it does not fit the design for the historical overlay. I have a motion to deny by Sherry Sliman. A second. Second by Paige Becknell. Is there any opposition or discussion? I, I would rather see the petitioner, rather than take the denial, take the postponement and work with his architect to, to soften that architecture and come back to us. It's already, the motion has been made and seconded. Uh, there, that's it. Unless Sherry wants to rescind her, her motion and Paige wants to rescind her second. I don't think that's something he can do in a month. Yes, it could be done easily. You know, if this would postpone a whole lot and we're ready to build it now. Well, so I, I object to the, uh, if we're keeping the original motion, I object to it. You haven't, you haven't closed the, you just took a. I asked, I asked if there was any opposition to no, the, no, yes, I. No, you haven't. Okay. To swore I did. No. 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 I, I, Chair, will you, I'd like to make a substitute motion to defer for 30 days and give the applicant an opportunity to work on, work with his architect and come back to us with an elevation um, that's uh, more consistent with the historical area. I have a substitute motion. I'll second that substitute motion. I have a substitute motion with a second. We'll vote on the substitute motion first. Is there any opposition to the substitute motion? And the substitute motion passes. Thank you very much. Item 7, public hearing for contract agreement. 7A zoning review ID 1634.06 for Woodgate condominiums. Good evening. Uh, Brandon Acosta with GWS Engineering. Um, just a brief overview. Uh, Woodgate condominiums is a uh, proposed 48 unit condominium development located on uh, Highway 73, approximately 2,850 feet north of uh, I-10. Uh, basically across from uh, Prairie Oaks subdivision. Uh, existing zoning is Crossroads Commercial. Um, we have prepared 
a traffic and drainage study and submitted that to the ERA, uh, which was approved. Uh, we have submitted the site plan to the staff, which was approved. We are only asking for y'all to approve the contract agreement on this project. And I'll answer any questions. No, I'll answer questions from the commission. <clears throat> There are no comments or questions. We'll open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to come up and speak on this property, please come up, sign in with the secretary. Get your three minutes to speak. No one wishing to speak. Comments or questions from the commission? This, this is the land that's being cleared right now? No? No, sir. Is it right? Uh, there is a, I think you, uh, there is another one that y'all have approved. Right. We actually engineer on it. Uh, it's a little closer to I-10. But this is basically uh, kind of a sister development, if you will. Same type of development. Either right next to it or just a couple? Uh, it's about blocks. two pieces, uh, three, three tracks down, maybe okay. five, six hundred feet. That's fine. O'Neill, this is a standard contract. It's a standard contract. It complies. It has all the information that was required by the drainage and traffic impact study. And it's, it's basically a, a contract for drainage okay. and traffic. Based on that, I'd like to make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by Scott Steve Barrow. Second. Second by Scott Courtright. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Item eight, new business. Any new business by the commissioner? Well, I've got an item of new business. Uh -oh. could be one. <laughs> Ozzie, if you're still back there in the control room, could you come out, please? Whoa. Oh, yeah. He's either not back there or he's afraid to come out. No, here he comes. Lance, would you come up, get this from me, please? The list that I had y'all go ahead and make corrections to as far as the uh, information for the, for the parish website. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hand it to Lance, so I, uh, I wanted Ozzy out here to see that Lance did get this. <laughs> That's the only new business that we have. A second the receipt. Item nine, old business. Any items of old business? I don't think we have any that I know of. Oil Ozzy's door. Um, item ten, subcommittee report. I think. Uh, ten is it seven ten? You want to go ahead and give your subcommittee report, Mike? Yeah, subcommittee met uh, last week. And we had a couple items on the agenda that we looked at. Um, we're going to be looking at the fees, the uh, fees involving contract agreements, the uh, PUDs, PUDs, TNDs. There was a list of... Um, it's a list of various type of... Um, zoning issues that we needed to go back and look at the fees on Lance's doing some further research on that and we'll be addressing it again uh, January uh, another item you have in front of you an ordinance um, there was a minor change made to this ordinance it deals with the um, non-conforming uses yeah, it's just one word. It's <laughs> not, um, you have it in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Is that the one I drafted? Yeah. It is. It's a one word, but it's a significant one right. word because the, it, it now requires if the non conforming use is abandoned, then the, the commercial operation, it's, it, the problem is that commercial operation continuing, then we had a problem with non conforming uses continuing. This way, if the non conforming use 
is discontinued. They can't continue that use, even though it still may be a commercial operation. It's more specific. Yeah, I wasn't trying to downplay it, just saying one word. I'm just saying it's not a big change to the ordinance in terms of wording. Uh, with that, I mean, I, I guess we need a motion to enter. If, 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 yeah, if you want to, uh, if you want, well, to introduce or to, uh, actually help have a public hearing. Yeah, public hearing. Is I, I'll move that we schedule that to a public hearing at the next meeting. Second. I have a motion to move forward on this uh, and have a public hearing at the January meeting by Julio Dumas, seconded by Steve Barrow. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Third item we were working on and still working on is the uh, sign ordinance. A um, couple issues within that ordinance that we're still looking at. Probably still a month or two away from bringing that to the full commission. Uh, and we, of course, we're still looking at zoning maps, zoning uses. Can I can I ask a question? When you're looking at the sign ordinance, are we? I guess an issue that's coming up now because some of the big box stores are coming here. You're looking at that, the, the, the height limitation on signs. We've had that come before the uh, Board of Adjustments. When they build the big stores, the signs are taller, are way, way taller than the uh, than when our regulations are allowed. I don't know if, it, if, if we want to continue doing it by variance or if we need to take a look at that. Lance, Lance can you can you look at that, that variance? I mean, if, if you're getting a certain amount of variances dealing with that, can you can you have that for us at the that information in the next subcommittee? Thanks. Shall I have another recommendation for the commission? Yes. Uh, thought there was two. No. Wasn't there two recommendations? Lance, wasn't there two recommendations for the commission from the zoning subcommittee? Am I forgetting something? I remember the non conforming. That was one. I kept thinking that there was another one. That's all I have down. That concludes my report. Good job. Oh, uh, meeting, meeting for uh, January subcommittee. Okay. Um, let's go week before. Um, second, second Wednesday of the month. Is that good? All of December, right? Yeah. That, that's the only reason I'm saying different for January, just so we can catch it. Everybody okay with that second? At six, at six p.m. Um, yeah, it would have to be because second wins. Yeah. No, we we meet on the second Wednesday. Yeah, we meet on the second Wednesday. I'm sorry, first Wednesday. Okay. Um, yeah. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. First Wednesday of January is the Sugar Bowl. Mike, did you get a time? We'll send out an Which email. I'll get, I'll get right, with Lance and we'll send out an email. <laughs> Show up and help me there. Again. <laughs> okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Paige Beck now. Second. Second by Scott Courtright. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. I, I oppose.